So today I'm going to be talking about managing TypeScript and GraphQL types in Node. Uh, but before I begin and get into the nitty gritty, a uh, little bit about me. My name is Erica. I'm a full stack engineer from BenchSci here in Toronto. Uh, and my first experience with both GraphQL and TypeScript was when I was building an API in Node. And I quickly ran into this feeling of frustration where I felt like I was managing two sets of types, which makes sense because it's two separate languages. Uh, but feeling that there was a bit of a burden with having to do this all the time, especially when I just want to get something working. Uh, and so obviously I'm like, okay, let's see if there's tools out there to help me automate this. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, we're first going to take a look at types in TypeScript and GraphQL, kind of get a sense of the problem. Uh, then we're going to take a look at a couple examples of tools to help us manage this. And then we're going to wrap up in time for people's second or third or fourth cup of coffee for the day. Uh, so without further ado, GraphQL, a lot of people are already really familiar with it, but just as a refresher, it's a data query language. And for the purposes of this talk, it can be considered a type language because GraphQL is smart enough to reject invalid input if uh, the data that you're providing for a particular field doesn't match up with what it sees in the schema. So for instance, if you provide a number for uh, an email that accepts a type string, it'll tell you it's an invalid input type. So over the course of the talk, I'm going to use this book data type as an example. Uh, so this is what it would look like in GraphQL. And TypeScript, it adds optional static types to your JavaScript, helping you catch uh, mismatch type errors throughout your code at compile time. And what's really awesome about it, and something that I really love, is that it makes your code self-documenting. You get a better sense of data as it goes through your system without necessarily needing to be very familiar with the code base. So our book example again, but this time in TypeScript. So you, you would think that GraphQL and TypeScript would be a match made in heaven, so to speak, to work together in a project where you catch all these mis mismatched type errors in your business logic layer uh, in TypeScript, and then you also have GraphQL kind of uh, rejecting stuff that would come in from the user that would be an invalid type. But in reality, you end up having to manage a lot of boilerplate code to have this happen, and you have to keep all these, syncs in, or all these types in sync with each other. So let's look at our two examples again, this time side by side. You can see that these look really, really similar. And especially developers, you start getting this like, knee-jerk reaction of like, I need to deduplicate de this somehow. Like, there's got to be something I can do. Um, and you can imagine as your code base gets a little bit bigger, you gotta, everyone works with mass size code bases every day, this can start get, your code base gets really huge really fast, mainly due to this seeming redundancy in types. So that brings us to the question, how do we manage that? And there's two approaches that we can take. We can either use GraphQL schemas as the source of truth to generate TypeScript, or we could use TypeScript classes as the source of truth and generate our GraphQL schema. So for the first approach, we're going to take a look at a tool called GraphQL Gen that's built by the Prisma team. And what it does is it generates type-safe resolvers based on your GraphQL schema automatically. And when the Prisma team first wrote about this in a fantastic blog post kind of outlining their motivation behind it and the goals that they want to achieve with this project, they said that they wanted to remove the manual process of keeping the, the uh, boilerplate code needed for type-safe resolvers in sync with the schema, as well as alleviate inconsistencies between the resolvers and the schema as your project grows in size and complexity, which is related to the type problem, but not necessarily exclusively because of it. So what's great about this tool is that it's backed by a company that's Prisma, uh, so you can expect uh, updates and improvements as time goes on because they have a huge investment in the GraphQL ecosystem. And it's really easy to adopt with your existing code base because it addresses a small slice of the managing types problem. You could use this tomorrow and not have to change really anything about how you're building your project. But the downside is it's addressing a small slice of the problem. It's not automated past the point of resolvers. And so if you're looking for a more comprehensive solution, this might not be the tool for you. But it's great at least to get some benefits sooner rather than later. Which brings us to our next approach, TypeScript to GraphQL. And we're going to look at a tool called Type GraphQL to help us achieve this. And what it does is it automatically generates your GraphQL schema and resolvers based on your TypeScript classes, uh, or sorry, using uh, TypeScript classes and decorators. And it claims to reduce your code base size by half or more, mainly by removing the redundancy in types that we saw earlier. So here's a quick example of what that looks like in code. So we've got our basic TypeScript class, our book data type, and we're using an object type and field decorator from type GraphQL to say that this is a GraphQL type, and I want to expose three fields on the schema, the ID, the title, and the author ID. 
And where we would normally have maybe a simple resolvers object like this to kind of list all our different queries and mutations, so just a basic list books um, query over here. In type GraphQL, we have a resolver, a query, and mutation decorator that we can import and add onto a TypeScript class so that we can automatically generate our resolvers from this. Leave that up for a second more. And then you get a schema that looks like this, which is what you would do by hand usually, but this is automatically generated uh, for you by type, excuse me, type GraphQL at compile time. So what's awesome about this is it's a really comprehensive solution. Um, if you're looking to just get started in GraphQL and TypeScript and you don't want to have to worry about managing types and you're okay with uh, following the patterns kind of prescribed by type GraphQL to get these benefits, it's a great tool for that. But having this comes at a bit of a price. It relies on experimental decorators in TypeScript, and this is accurate as of version 3.3.2, I believe. Um, so I'm not sure where it's going just yet on that front. And it also doesn't have the backing of a bigger company. It's a single maintainer right now on an open source project. So if either of these things were to go away, the maintainer stops maintaining the project, you may have to take on maintenance of it because now you've structured your project around these patterns. And if it's uh, the experimental support, you're going to be stuck on an old version of TypeScript. It also doesn't yet support more advanced GraphQL functionality, such as data loaders, which is something you'd ideally want to start introducing at the beginning of your project. So if you're looking to leverage more advanced GraphQL functionality and, or like experiment with it, this also isn't the tool for you. So to wrap up, types are fantastic. There's a lot going for them until you have to try and keep them in sync, especially manually and by hand. Uh, and as TypeScript continues to increase in popularity, um, as we've seen from surveys such as the state of JS and GitHub's the state of the Octoverse, we can see that benefits will, or sorry, developers will benefit from tools such as the ones I've talked about today and ones that aren't even in the ecosystem just yet that help us uh, keep our types in sync and automate this a little bit for us. So thanks so much, everyone, for coming to my talk. Um, enjoy your coffee and enjoy the rest of the conference.